On the outside, confirmation looks like any other ceremony, like a graduation or a party. But to know what's really happening, we have to look deep inside the soul. Your heart was made for God, and like any muscle, it must be stretched. The more you pray, the more you stretch it, making more and more room for God's love to fill it. God first filled your heart with the Holy Spirit at your baptism. Now, at confirmation, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are increased and you're given special strength to spread and defend the faith. But who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is one of the three persons of the Trinity, and one of his titles is the Giver of Life. In confirmation, as with all the sacraments, God gives you special graces to live like he does, unselfishly and for the good of others. You might not feel a change at the time of confirmation, but the outpouring of the Holy Spirit seals and armors you. This outpouring is precisely what he gave to his apostles. After his death and resurrection, Jesus said that he would give them the Holy Spirit, and through it, the strength they need to tell the entire world about Jesus. Ten days later on the Feast of Pentecost, Mary and the apostles were hiding in the upper room in Jerusalem. They were scared and didn't know what to do. A strong wind blew and the apostles saw tongues of fire resting upon their heads. Their souls were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were given the inspiration and fortitude to face all kinds of persecution and hostility in spreading God's message. A few weeks earlier, Peter had been so afraid that he denied he even knew Jesus. Now, he boldly proclaimed the truth, and on that day alone, over 3,000 people became followers of Jesus Christ. So why does Jesus invite you to receive that very same outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the Sacrament of Confirmation? Because just as he sent the apostles out, he sends you out. And Jesus knows that sometimes what we need isn't simply more faith, but the courage to live that faith and share it with others. Filled with the Holy Spirit, the apostles traveled and preached throughout the ancient world and set up the Christian church that we know today. It wasn't easy. They were mocked, spit on, and even murdered. In your own life, in your family, your school, your community, you will come across people who are in need of conversion and repentance, just like the apostles did. It is your job to charitably share the gospel, not just in your words, but in the way you live and act on a daily basis. So how does confirmation fit into our lives as Christians? We become God's children and receive an outpouring of the Holy Spirit at baptism, which is now being strengthened and confirmed in the sacrament of confirmation. The apostles laid hands on baptized Christians to confirm them 2,000 years ago. And still today, your bishop, a successor of the apostles, will lay his hands on you. The bishop then says, Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, as he anoints you on the forehead with oil. Just as soldiers would bear their leader's seal on their armor or shield, now you bear the seal of Jesus. You choose a confirmation name, a saint who will be your spiritual guide in heaven, your prayer warrior, as you strive to fulfill God's mission for you. And you choose a sponsor to be a special help here on earth, who is meant to serve as an example of holiness and walk with you on your journey. So you see, confirmation is not simply recognition of your growth or advancement in the faith. It is not about you claiming the faith as your own. In fact, you do not do anything except receive the grace of God and the strengthening of the Holy Spirit. God does all the work. He gives you the grace to go into the world as a witness of Jesus Christ. That's why, when you're confirmed, you also receive the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Each of these gifts enables you to receive God's inspirations more effectively. You can accept these gifts and fully develop them by spending time in prayer with God and striving to live a good and virtuous life. Over time, you'll find yourself responding to the promptings of the Holy Spirit more naturally as you become more and more like Christ. But if you abandon these gifts, if you fail to spend time with God, you risk falling into sin. Satan is the father of lies and will confuse you about what will make you happy and fulfilled. Just like the apostles, we live in a world where every day is a struggle of good versus evil. Satan is ready to send you down the wrong path. 
Because of the sacrament of confirmation, you now bear the seal of Christ, and you've been given His spiritual protection. You can hear His call, and you can follow it down the path where countless saints have gone before you, boldly proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, resisting temptation, growing in virtue, and becoming what God is calling you to be, holy.